when so, you can't fit in, just leave it alone. Exactly. Just do do so, you, you know. Or you can leave Korea. As simple as that. Damn, Sean. <laughs> Why is it too much? Say, get the f out. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Korea Unfiltered. I'm your host, Paris Kagiri, and today I have a new guest. And if you guys see, we are dressed very, it's a conundrum out here, because I have all white, this guy has all black on. I don't know, we clearly didn't talk about matching today. That's what I'll tell you guys today. But, op op <laughs> zero, but opposite Sean, track. first of all, yes. I haven't introduced you. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't introduced you, Sean. <laughs> Let's welcome Sean! Yay! <laughs> he's like trying to like defend himself, and he's not on camera yet, Sean. You yeah. can defend yourself now. I think opposites try. I think it's perfect. You think so? You know what I mean? It's I feel like... There's a good balance, bro, white and black. It's just know. a lot of black. Really what is so? up with like Koreans and black? Like what is up with y'all? It's a very comfortable color, you know? Is it? And especially in the winter, you know, it's like most people are black. I, d I don't understand it. I remember when I came to Korea the first time and I was like, are people just allergic to like color out here? No, there are, there are people that dress up with color, but I think black is just a... Well, where you are they? just look slimmer, I think. There's that But you're that already thing. slim. So what are you slimming? What, are, what more do you need to slim, Sean? It's more, I don't know. I'm just used to wearing all black. Bro, I, I can't stand all black. Really? I can't stand it. Oh, I just no. feel like you blend in with everyone. You know what I mean? Right. In Korea, especially. Mm, okay, and next time I'll put more color. Have like, you know, like neon colors on next okay, time. Please. I'll try. We appreciate, don't, don't come with neon. Okay. I'm, I'm completely joking. Right. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yes. Um, hello. Um, my name is Sean Solo. And I am a content creator on the internet. And Paris, thank you so much for having me. Oh, thank it's you for coming. Thank you very much. I've actually, um, I didn't tell Jay, actually, no, I think I did tell Jay this. Mm -hmm. I've seen some of your reels pop up when I'm like scrolling right. on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Would you consider your podcast a podcast or is it like, like no, what would it's, you? No, it's, it's a stream. It's, huh? I'm str live streaming it. Oh, so you're doing this all live? Yeah, and it's you're recording. Live. Yeah. And this is with, can I say Vaughn or? Oh, no, that one, um, that one is um it's not live it's oh, okay. recorded separately but yeah. it's like we read reddit stories and we react to it but um per i just do a separate personal um, oh live streaming yeah what that, do you live what, stream on oh uh, youtube currently oh and how is yeah. how is that it's going great I, it's been only a, over a year mm -hmm. for me but mm -hmm. uh, i feel like my the growth has been very fast which so, is really good yeah it's it, it's it's very um it's a blessing, really, because I was I'm able to do this full time now. And, yeah. Uh, and it's really it just fits well with my personality and what you want to do. Oh, absolutely. So I'm very lucky at my age to have found something that I love to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? What may I ask? What type of content you do? Because before you came on, I tried not to research anything about you because mm -hmm. I wanted you to introduce yourself. I don't right, want to right. be the one who's like, he's this, he's that. You right. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So what type of content do you? So I do? I do. Um, I pretty much, um, it's like a talk show. Mm -hmm. I pretty much just talk and uh, talk about multiple things. But I think right. most people like it when I talk about relationships and things like that. Yeah. Of course, people are more um, gravitate towards living in Korea. And, and that's uh, why this whole podcast is exactly yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so sure. i uh that those are the things i pretty much talk about right but right. it's really random i talk about everything just everything and anything. yeah and i have a community and we all kind of get together every yeah. day and just hang out and that that's pretty uh -huh. much the like the um the premise of the whole yes but how have you found like the wait how did you start the journey into content creating if i may ask yeah it's um i just came out of the army and i think oh god not the army every every phase of anyone's life is you wonder what you're going to do mm, yeah. for the rest of your life and yeah i've had friends um i served as a katusa as a who uh, it's like a katusa as in um a korean augmentation to the u.s army oh okay, so okay, we're yeah. um uh you know rock republic of korea soldiers right. that serve alongside the u.s army right right and um they say the elites go to become Katusa, I mean elites meaning oh. people that have that go to very prestigious universities. Oh, what university did you go to? I didn't go to university. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Wait, and uh, then wait, um so when I would talk with them, right. they they all had a plan what they're gonna do. They're gonna right. go back to university and right. they're gonna intern at this company and right. and I was there just like, what am I gonna do? you know? And I came out, and um, I swear to God, I met a friend and for dinner, and he was like, you should uh, try TikTok. 
Mm-hmm. And I was like, why? I don't dance. Why would I try TikTok? No, and he was like, mean? it's not, TikTok's not only dancing. Mm-hmm. There's so many niches. And I started uploading videos and then I had a big like weight loss um, oh, transformation. Okay. And um, I uploaded that and I thought it was going to go viral. Mm-hmm. And then the next day I see I got 49 views. <laughs> I know that feeling that's so the reality well. right when you first start <laughs> off is that's the reality you're like I'm, I'm gonna make it big and you're like oh only two people saw it and you're like, yeah that, well that's the reality you yeah. know and then um i met him again next time and he's like you should live stream mm-hmm. i'm like why would i live stream mm-hmm. he's like you're well you articulate yourself well mm-hmm. why don't you try you know live streaming right and i swear to god that day i um came back home and as soon as i got home i got a notification from tiktok mm-hmm. saying you can go live yeah, so I pressed that go live button, and here we are. Oh, wow. And that's, yeah. like, how you grew yourself. Yeah, I did. Wow. Yeah, I just kept doing it, and it just took a life of its own, really. Everybody do TikTok. You can become like so. Sean. I guess so. TikTok is, <laughs> really? like... But TikTok is kind of... It's not the best social media platform, to be honest. Because you think so, yeah. Instagram is... I think YouTube and Instagram is where it's at. Mm-hmm. I feel like TikTok is not a place where you can truly build a community. This is what I think about it. Col- correct me if I'm wrong, because mm-hmm. I'm also on TikTok. Right. Not big in any way, but I feel like TikTok is Well, you very will get big. This podcast will definitely a get big. Say a shot. Right? Say for the people in mm-hmm. the back. I feel like TikTok is very much Gen Z heavy, while right. as Instagram is everyone combined. Right. And YouTube is also very much like everyone combined, including right. boomers, right? right? So I feel like... I'm like you where I think Instagram and YouTube is where it's at. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to growing your channel, TikTok is where it's at. For sure. I feel like TikTok is where you can blow up faster. 100%. Right. 100%. Okay, so I'm right. Okay, okay. Because that's how I felt when I'm on TikTok. Um, Instagram, if you look at how Instagram works is when we open Instagram, we usually look at what we, who, the people we follow. Exactly. TikTok is for you page. You know exactly. what I mean? So I don't think it's um, TikTok is... It's more of a business card Mm -hmm. to talk. Hey, I have this many followers, Mm -hmm. you know. But, um, yeah, I would suggest people to kind of focus more on Instagram. I think there's more sort of that intimate kind of relationship Mm -hmm. with your followers. Right. That's that's very true, actually. Mm. I'm going to ask you a question that's going to sound very um, ignorant. But I'm going to ask it because Mm -hmm. people... I'm pretty sure some people are also, yeah. also very curious. Yeah. How is your English so good? Oh my god! Oh I yeah, just no, felt like no, 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 not at all. No, 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 not at all. Um, I went to an international school. Right, right. Yeah. So and you also said before that you you have a Canadian passport, right? Yes, I do. Okay, yeah. so h- did you live in Canada? No, or? I never did. I lived here all my life. But I got hmm. so the Canadian law how it works is yeah. my mom was born in Canada. Uh, She's Korean. That makes sense. Okay. She was born in Canada, yeah. and the law is if um, if your child. Mm-hmm. If, well, if you're a mother, if you're a parent, as a Canadian, then yeah. you get it. You can as get well. the citizenship too, you right? Get the okay, citizenship, that makes yeah. sense. And I've never met someone who's gone to an international school. How was that experience? It's good and bad, mm-hmm. I think. I, really? I think, yeah, it's good and bad. I yeah. think one thing that I have to really thank my mom for mm-hmm. sending me to international school is um, that I'm able to speak English. Yeah. That's why I'm able to do this for a and living. And you're very articulate while doing it, for sure. You know, I, it's, my Korean is not as good as my my English. Is it not? Yeah, because my family, we all speak English. Wow, Yeah, really? I speak English with my friends. and um, In Korea, right? Because they're yes, all in Korea, yes, right? Yes, in oh, Korea. Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, and, yeah, but, like, because I was overweight, mm-hmm. I used to get bullied a lot for being overweight welcome to the bully club you did too also bullied. really yeah this is like it's so up that we're gonna trauma bond right now but mm. yeah i was also bullied really yeah but it's it was stupid, for but me it was just it was really a unique scenario because mm. in my school i don't know about your high school mm-hmm. but or middle school but in my school in order to become popular you had to be athletic <laughs> or smart Oh. If you were both, you're really popular. Mine is the complete opposite. I did a lot of sports uh-huh. and I was very intelligent, I would say, mm-hmm. if I would say so myself, mm-hmm. but I was bullied. So for my school, mm-hmm. if you are more into like, there is more very much physical appearance. Oh. If you look good, if you wear nice clothes. You know, at my school, it was not like that. You can look like the most, oh, you wow. can look like the witch that comes out of Rapunzel <laughs> or Shrek. <laughs> it, or it doesn't yeah. matter, you know, as long as wow. you're smart and athletic, you were popular. Must be not. I should have gone to your school, and you should have gone to my school then. <laughs> well, like it wouldn't have worked because I, I was overweight back then. Did you dress well? They no, oh, okay. no, 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 no. Yeah, mean, like, we're still in the bully club. Okay. Yeah. You are mostly bullied for your weight, you would say. And for not, you know, 
I wasn't really out there academically because oh, I got okay. bullied for being overweight. So I yeah. wouldn't, I didn't, I didn't want to do anything in school. I feel what you mean. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So I would just kind of neglect schoolwork yeah. completely. And that's why I got bad grades. Oh, yeah. How was that with having Korean parents? Because I, I, I never African told my birth. mom. Yeah. You never told your mom? No, she found, she found out later. She found oh, out like no. last year. Oh, wow. Yeah, or something. Like really recently she found out about it. Yeah, because I didn't want to let my mom know. I wanted completely understand. You know what I mean? I wanted her to know that I was like a good, popular kid in school, so I wouldn't. I didn't tell her, but but now she's like, she's she was very heartbroken when she heard it. I bet. But now that I've changed, now that you know, and you're doing well. Like I'm pretty sure she's very proud of you. Well, I. I'd love to think so, yeah. I think she is, too. She is. I think she is, she yeah. She is. Mama Sean, you're probably not watching, but I'm pretty sure you're, you're proud. She, no, she will be watching oh, this. Okay, hi, Mama Sean. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I completely understand. Even for me, I don't mm-hmm. think... I don't even think I ever told my brother I was bully, being bullied Can also. Can I ask why? I, I, you seem like well, very vibrant. You said you are... You do seem... You know, I was not very vibrant when I was in high school. Um, I was bullied mostly because I didn't get along with the black kids in my school. Because I used to like, I used to be heavy into K-pop when I was in oh, middle really? school and high school. Yeah. So like Big Bang, Super yeah. Junior, oh God, 21. Yes. K-pop these days can never touch back in the day. That yeah. was the golden age, right? Yes. Now I'm just like, I mean, I guess. Um, but Absolutely. back in the day, I was like really, really heavy into it. Mm-hmm. Big Bang was actually my favorite. Even it though, was everyone's favorite. Yes, they're going through stuff right now. Yeah. But um, I think because I was very heavy into this, like, excuse me, Korean culture, black kids saw me as I wasn't black enough, you know? And then for the Asians, I'm not Asian, so I'm not going to fit in with them. So it was like this weird, like, medium that I where was did in. You gr- where did you go to uh, high school? So Which I went uh, to a school in near Philly. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. And um, also because my family was we weren't rich in any way mm-hmm. shape or form right. so my clothes weren't the nicest clothes um i used to have like my pants wouldn't fit right because i'm tall it was just like a lot going on in mm. my life um but to be honest looking back i don't i'm not sad that i was bullied because i turned out this way exactly now, you know what yeah. i mean so i can't be like oh i wish i was never bullied well happens for a reason you know mm. god brought me here for a reason too but that's mainly why i was bu- mm. oh and i have a big forehead in America, if you have a big forehead, mm. Mm, no. In Korea, like people love my forehead here because like mm-hmm. bulbous or whatever. Mm. Not in we America. We get like forehead fillers all the time. Exactly. Not in America. Ah, uh, the beauty center is different. It's completely different. Mm. I was called big forehead like all of my life. <laughs> really? <laughs> Sounds so stupid right now. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, that's why I was like kind of picked on. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I'm over it. Yeah, but mm-hmm. I think it's like uh, the thing about getting bullied, it, it leaves a scar, you know? Oh, 100%. But it doesn't, it scar doesn't heal. It has leaves a mark. They say um, the tree remembers, the axe does not. I'm the tree. I'm always going to remember. But um, have you had people that, this is so random, that bullied you back in the day hit you up on social media? Yes, I did. Yeah, I mean, you know, I I don't want to get too, you know, deep into it, but I have, yeah, I have. See, the tree remembers, the axe does not. You're absolutely right with that. The people that have done it, they don't remember. Anyways, let's get off of this conversation. Yeah. Um, the trauma is actually coming back now. Mm. Um, going back to you being in an international school, yes. you said that you mostly speak English in your family right mm. now. Have you h- found it hard to fit into, you know, like, I don't know. Korean, Korean. Yes. Yeah. That's what I was, Thank you for taking it out of um, my You know, I think when I went to the army, mm-hmm. yeah, it was kind of a challenge. Mm, okay. I couldn't understand their culture. Because I was so westernized. Yeah. When they would do certain like drinking games and they would do this and that, I was like, what's that? What's that? And they would have their slangs that I didn't understand. Yeah, yeah. You know? Oh, wow. And so that was kind of, and then my Korean wasn't as good at the time, but Mm -hmm. it got so much better after when going to the army. Yeah. Because, you know, Katusas, even though you're alongside U.S. soldiers, you stick together. Right. You always stick together. Yeah. So you just be Korean. And that's where I really improved and I learned a lot. Oh, wow. In the army, yeah. So they didn't shun you for not knowing Korean really well. They actually took you in and, you know. No, they never shunned. No, they would, they would be more like, yo, like, they would be so like, whoa, like, oh, his English, English is like so amazing. good. Yeah, yeah, they would be like, whoa, and they would try to learn it. And, oh, wow. yeah, they weren't, I never really got shunned. I mean, because I'm Korean. Yeah, true. You know? So, true. <laughs> mm. There's no reason for you to Yeah, so they were more yeah. like wanting to like, yo, how do you get that 
accent the and accent. how do you you know yeah, yeah yeah and when you were when you were in school in the international school mm -hmm. do you have any regrets for not learning korean earlier or are you like it's no okay. not at all i mean i i feel like i've i've my korean isn't like just absolutely amazing mm -hmm. i can have conversations like mm -hmm. 24 hours like it's, it's of course like yeah. i can speak fluently yeah but you know my job now it doesn't really require me to speak korean it's a know, lot of so english speaking it's right? all english and sometimes you know just doing this every day when i speak korean i'm like oh, you know like it's like you kind of get confused yeah. like wait what word was that so you have to say it in English, but yeah. like an English accent. Yeah, I completely, like, you know? I'm obviously not Korean, but as someone who knows Korean to a certain extent, there are some times where I'm thinking in Korean, and I can't say the word in English. Yeah, or, like, and I'm it gets mixed, and it's yeah. like vice versa, right? And then I know three other languages on top of yeah. that. So it's just like a jumble of languages in your head. And oh, people yeah. are like, what's wrong with you? But you're like, I'm just thinking in so many languages mm -hmm. right now. Because Korean's amazing, by the way. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm so surprised. The pronunciation. About... <laughs> no, it's not just the pronunciation. It's like, you have really good Korean. Thank you. I tried. I tried. You know, I've lived here for six years, and I feel like when mm. you live in somebody else's country, you need to learn. But there are some people that lived here for six years, and they don't speak a lick Facts. Korean. Facts. Right? Facts. I wonder why that happens. I guess it's just most people are not. They don't want to take risks. They want to. They like to be comfortable. And I feel like yeah. it's also a mistake thing. They don't want to make mistakes. Yeah. I've made so many mistakes speaking in Korean. But that's how you learn. That's true. You know? That's very true. Yeah, that's how you learn. We all got to start somewhere for sure. When it comes to you and like your um, friendship circle, hmm. have you, do you have, may I ask, do you have more foreign friends or Korean friends? What do you think? I think it's a good balance. It's a good balance. But uh, yeah, I don't have a lot of friends. Do you have, you don't have a lot of friends you no. said? No. I just keep a very small circle. Oh, me too. Okay. I thought you meant like, I just don't like people. Are you somebody, like, are you the type to be friends with everyone? Hell to the no. Sean. You have a no. small circle. I am not. My mm. circle is this small. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I just, do you think that's like, okay, so now that we're back to, you know, us having similarities there, mm. do you think it's like a childhood thing? It's not necessary. I, I don't know. It's, it's about a childhood thing, but I realized that as I grew older, mm -hmm. my sta I hold higher standards for myself and I... Mm -hmm. Um, I have certain values for myself and, right. um, like I, like we talked about, most people are just okay with being comfortable. You know, I truly mm -hmm. believe in taking risks. You know, I truly mm -hmm. believe in excelling in whatever I'm doing, especially right. in my career. Right. Um, but most people can't really understand that and they'll think I'm crazy, but I don't want to hear that I'm crazy. I want to hear me too. Let's, let's work let's together. Do it. Let's, let's do it, it together. Yeah. Let's, yeah. I'll, let's help each other. Interesting. Okay. And then I realized that the more standards i hold for myself i have to cut people off and oh. the whole idea of having n being friends with everyone it's like that means that you have to suppress your own self to mm -hmm. fit other people's feelings and how or, you know idea, I mean? or idea right yeah so i think all in all like if you do that you're just gonna end up hating yourself oh say that you know? again sean yeah you know what i mean you're just yeah. gonna end up like not even knowing who you are and i also feel like um personally the more friends you have or friends if you have the mm. less friends you have yeah you know mike tyson said this beautifully he <laughs> said if you're friends with everyone you're an enemy to yourself oh. you know okay mike tyson that's yeah. true so it's like uh, but if you have the talent and the social skills of knowing oh everybody God, that's yeah. a talent too i mean that's yeah, i respect that social s my social skills are definitely a bit lower than most people i would say so am so, i uh, you so, know yeah. and so, i yeah. think if you're really true to yourself because I'm very, my personality is very, I'm bold. Mm -hmm. I say how it is. I You're just, like Jay. That's why you and Jay are friends, exactly. probably. Yeah. yeah. Like, I just say how it is. And most people can't handle that because they don't want to hear the truth. Yeah. Most they want you to lie, yeah, for sure. Exactly. But if you want to be friends with everyone, you have to lie. Yeah. Like, that's a lot of work. It is. It is a lot of work. That is a job. I don't know how you yeah. guys are doing it. That is a job, for yeah. sure. But, you know, but the people that do have that kind of, personality and, mm -hmm. and skill it's i respect it it takes a lot of courage to know everyone and God, yes. a lot of social skill it's a talent yes know? like i i sometimes go to um like social events mm. it's funny that i go to social events and i'm not social <laughs> i go to social events but you're a model I, so like they invite you to yeah, certain things but i stay in the same circle <laughs> so it's right, like right, weird right. like i go to social events and mm -hmm. i'm like stuck with the same person the whole night mm -hmm. and i see people mingling with everyone and i'm like i wish i could do that because mm -hmm. I can't. Why do you think you can't? So I feel like maybe it's the right. fear of rejection. Mm -hmm. And also, I'm scared of knowing someone and then finding out they're like a terrible human being. Mm -hmm. And then I can't take back everything that I've told you. You know what I mean? Right. Because a lot of questions that I do get asked from my viewers is, 
how do you make friends in Korea? That's, That's a the big one question. big question that I yeah. get asked. Yeah. But what what is like if you can give an advice to people about how to make friends in Korea, what would you say? I think that question usually people are asking, how do you make friends with Koreans in Korea? Oh, interesting. Yeah, I've I've never really been asked that question in a way that they're asking, how do you make friends in Korea with foreigners? Mm -hmm. It's usually how do you make Korean friends? Uh. And as somebody who's lived here for six years, I don't try anymore. I stop trying. Because the way us non-Koreans take um, friendship and the way Koreans take friendship is so different. There's always that they'll see you as a foreigner no matter what in Korea. Yeah. So um, I personally don't try to make Korean friends. If it happens, great. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't, that's fine. Like, or if they're, if they're like westernized. It's easier. Right. It's a lot easier. If you're trying to make Korean friends who are westernized, it's going to be a lot easier. Because that's what I heard is like places like Korea, Japan, you know, you're always going to feel like a second class citizen. But I think that's the same, too, if I go to France. Oh, 100%. I'll be second class. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, for sure. I think it's a little different in the aspect that other countries are more diverse mm. than Korea is. Oh, yeah. So you're going to accept, you're going to be accepted a little bit more. Um, but there's obviously going to be discomfort mm -hmm. still. Like, yeah. there's always going to be discomfort. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's how I answer that question. Don't try. Mm -hmm. Just wait for it to be organic. Have you found it easy to make foreign friends for you? Or? Yeah, I think so. I think there are yeah. more, like we talked about, Korean people are more, um, we're reserved, like we're more shy and we don't really approach, I you know, yeah. but if you're talking to like you, for example, mm -hmm. it's like, Hey, hi, how are you doing? What's more your open. name? But more it's, and I'm, my English is more, I'm comfortable with, with English, English more. Yeah. So for me, it's easier. Like I said, yeah. it's, it's, they're just more open. Korean. And I already have uh, my Korean friends. They're my army friends. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, my okay. army friends. And um yeah. or guys that I went to high school with. Mm -hmm. But they're westernized because it's so an international it really school. Count. Yeah, it's not they're not like Korean Korean, yeah. you know. So it doesn't count that yeah. much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But army, like we go through hell hell and back together. I've heard <laughs> so stories. It's, it's, we just kind of built that that yeah. bond. I have heard yeah. stories. I'm mm -hmm. like, thank God I'm not a Korean man born in born in Korea. Because y'all go through stuff. But it's okay. You think it's well Depending on your experience, I would say it's okay. I mean, of course, like because I I, went, I was a Katusa. We yeah. have a lot of merit. Right. We right. have we leave every weekend. Oh wow! But we couldn't okay. because of COVID. Did we were you locked. At the worst time. Yeah, we were locked in for six months. We couldn't leave. Oh my you know? god! Yeah, the, at that time I was dating someone who was in that realm, mm -hmm. and I remember I didn't see him for like four four months. Oh yeah, because they completely lock us down. They were like, you can't go anywhere. And yeah. I was like, what? And that was hard. That was kind of like annoying because we have these weekend passes, but we're letting it all go to waste. Yeah, you can't use them. But for me, I think um, I, I never complain. You, you know? were just like, well, I have to do this no, duty. No, no, so. no, no. I, I never complain about anything. So okay. it's just I understand that I'm there for mm -hmm. a reason mm -hmm. and you just get it done. And for me, I people always say, that, oh, it was bad. It was bad. But for me, I met amazing people and okay. i've learned a lot from it so i have no yeah. regret it's yeah i have nothing to complain you about. you have like the complete opposite um experience from some of my friends i've had a friend who like literally wants to get citizenship from another country because he had such a bad military experience of course i mean that's yeah. why I'm, I'm very blessed and to be able to serve as a katusa yeah but um yeah either like if even though i was i think placed in a bad place mm -hmm. i still wouldn't have complained you have very positive mindset good things happen to people that are positive you know so this is a question that i really wanted to ask you yeah as somebody who has like a good amount of foreign friends mm -hmm. and a good amount of korean friends and also because you work in the social media realm mm -hmm. where you have a lot of foreign viewers right mm -hmm. i would say mm -hmm. what's one complaint that you've heard foreigners like constantly talk about Hongdae. who Hongdae. oh my god I hate Hongdae. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah. Wait, you do too? Yeah, no, I never go to... I'm not, I don't go clubbing at all. Even in like the Shinza area? You no, just... I don't go bars. I don't go clubs. Why I, not? Why are you really so, reserved? Though? Yeah, I, it's not my thing. I, I like to I like to work, stay at home, go to yeah. the gym. and that's. I bet there's someone like a fan of yours who's like, he looks like the opposite. Absolutely. That that's. But that's the... You know, that's I guess what I give off. People just assume that. Yeah. But no, like I, I just don't... But the... Biggest thing is Korean. Every single email I get is just, oh, I met this guy in Hongdae. I'm like, stop going Hongdae then. Why are y'all meeting people in Hongdae? That's the first thing I should be So asking. like, I, yeah, I'm just sick and tired of talking about it because 
you know but i you know but here i mean yeah. i'd love to answer your question um but yeah hongdae for sure is like the uh-huh. biggest thing that i get asked like oh i met this guy hongdae he ghosted me i'm like what, what did you think it's hongdae guys what um, did you think yeah if you live in korea or have lived in korea you know hongdae is not the place to be for sure yeah but i just don't i just i that's the biggest question that i get about yeah. guys korean guys ghosting but I think you get asked that a lot because you are a Korean guy exactly. yourself. So I feel like... And they know I tell it straight like up. Like it is. Yeah, like you're not going to... Why do Korean men ghost, by the way? Now that you're here. I think it's multitude of reasons. You know, it's it not just... There are guys in Korea, all over the world, that think with their dick. They can't think with their brain, Same right? Like, yep, yep. They have no values for themselves. Dang. All they do is they just go on the... week. They just do their thing in the weekdays just oh yeah, yeah if i go like i just can't wait for the weekend to go home there to so find a drunk girl that i can sleep with there are guys with no sort of values and no dreams and no goals and yeah. that's what they look forward and um you end up meeting a guy like that and what do you expect right it's, it's, yeah so um but then on the other hand there are girls that come to korea it's just simply to sleep with korean guys say it Sean. so it's a multitude of reasons it's not just Maybe these this Korean guy slept with a foreign girl that just came to Korea to sleep with Korean dudes and told his friend that, and his friend told his friend, his friend told his friend, and, it just keeps and going this and whole going. image of foreign girls are like easy, gets, you know, it gets and polluted. I've heard that before, by the way. Yeah, and um, you know, so I think that's the where the main cause of the problem mm-hmm. is not just guys fault or girls fault it's just it's, it's everything it's, a, it's definitely a multitude it's a multitude reason. yeah exactly right? yeah and i'm sure i only named like, like two not even half yeah out of the know? millions of reasons that somebody yeah, but can ghost. i speaking of hongdae i just hate it i just not not just the clubbing culture in korea it's, yeah. it's not like other countries where <laughs> you just go to enjoy music it's it's you know yeah, yeah. they're there clubbing here and it's i was shocked yeah at how different it's it dangerous is. like genuinely it's, Bro? it's dangerous right Yes, and I feel like nobody has yet to talk about how dangerous clubbing is in Korea. Can you please elaborate? It's everybody has this fantasy in their head that Korea, like clubbing in Korea, is this. Oh, you just go have fun. You meet a guy, maybe you talk a little bit. No, sexual harassment happens a lot. Mm-hmm. Sexual assaults happen a lot in club mm-hmm. in clubs in Korea, and I, I think nobody has really talked about that. Yeah, like you will get groped most likely, uh-huh. especially Hongdae. Yeah, yes, because there's that image in Hongdae where. Oh, foreign girls are just going there to meet Korean men. So these men, not all, obviously, these men go there and start touching up on you, thinking you're going to be like, oh, my God, yes. But you're there like, bro, that's sexual harassment that mm-hmm. you're doing. But, yeah, some somebody needs to talk about the dangers of clubbing in Korea, yeah, for it's, sure. Yeah, it's not the safest place to be at, especially when there's drunk people. And, like, I, that's what I hate about it because it, may, it actually de- makes me depressed looking really? at guys like that. Guys that are just there, lasers coming out of their eyes, trying to get some girl they can sleep with. Yeah. It's honestly terrifying as a woman. It, it, I'm, I'm sure it is. Yeah, because you can feel it. Well, I don't know about the girls. No, I, I can, can feel, feel it too. I can smell it in the air. Damn. You I'm know? glad somebody else feels like that. Yeah, and then what, I, well, that, the, what makes me so depressed about that is because they could, all that time and energy, they're spending all that money, they could spend it on working on themselves improving themselves where they can attract women instead yeah you know how long are you going to be chasing how long are you going to live that life i wish i would i would be able to answer that but it seems like a lot of people tend especially um no offense a lot of men tend to have this thought that because they don't have a biological clock they can just chase 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 and like but then but then it's it's so funny if you think about the idea of chasing women like like you're just spending money and they're just in it for that, in a sense. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's nothing it's, it's, else, literally. But yeah. I think for me, too, I think every guy would go through that phase how chasing women is cool. Yeah, that's true. It's Especially cool. when like, you're okay, young. Yeah. Like, you're just like, oh, yeah, I get it. But then you hit a train. Like, it, it just, you hit a wall. And you're just, and like, you're just like, you oh, know what? I just want one. Cha, speak on that, Sean. And then um, I'm sure guys listening to this at their young age wouldn't understand what I'm saying. No, they if you're, understand. like, early 20s, like, teenage years you're probably not gonna understand yeah for sure. they'll think like oh what is he talking about but listen like trust me <laughs> like it's 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 hey but you gotta learn on your own okay this is a question that i have 
when everybody talks about like, oh, Hongdae is this like trashy place, blase, blase. Was it always like that? Because you've lived in Seoul your whole life. Hongdae, like, I, I, I think, I don't know. I think mm-hmm. since I was in high school, yeah, I think mm-hmm. Hongdae was like, now, now that more foreigners are coming in. That's true, yeah. It became more uh, foreigners in Rodeo. Yeah. Hongdae, like yeah. it got more bigger. But back then, it was, I think, just mo- mainly more Koreans and foreigners, I would say, back then, like yeah. years ago. Yeah. Because when I... Before K-pop was, like, you know... Really, really big, mm. yeah. Because when I first came to Korea, I came in 2014, the yeah. first time, to just visit. Mm. I feel like Hongdae was not really on the map like that. <laughs> this was Six years ago? Yeah, Probably Itaewon. Yeah, yeah, oh, not six years ago. So, 2014 was 10 years ago. It was when I first came. I came for, like, two weeks. That was probably when... Apkujo, Rodeo, and Itaewon was, was like really... like the rich, rich yeah. area. The, there was, I remember I was like, like the popular yeah, we can't afford to go there. Um, but Hongdae was not really on the map. Yeah, it wasn't. But then I came the second time in 2018, mm-hmm. and Hongdae was like where yeah. you have to be, especially mm-hmm. as a college student back mm-hmm. then. It was where you had to be. And then that's why I realized, oh, Hongdae is really trashy. And drinks are cheap. <laughs> and they're disgusting. Yeah. And I'm it smells so like shit. Right? Yeah, and I was just like, uh, I see why they attract students, because... Y'all don't know the taste of alcohol. I mean, I don't either because <laughs> mm. I don't drink like that. Yeah. But the taste of alcohol in Hongdae is just trash. I, you know what? I'm, I'm not a big drinker at all. <laughs> neither yeah. am I. Neither am I. My brother is like, oh, this is blase, blase whiskey. I'm like, it's whiskey. I don't What are we talking about? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then I'm you go to really Hongdae and you're like, what is this? <laughs> 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 what is it's this like tastes the same at one point, right? <laughs> Fact. Yeah. It's like, you probably didn't even put any alcohol in here. Mm-hmm. There's nothing in here. You're just paying for fake alcohol. Yeah, probably just um, a little bit of soju and some, gin, some tonic. And then they're like, it's gin and tonic. It's just soju and tonic. Um, But yeah, that's when I started realizing how trashy Hongdae is. Mm -hmm. And then as I started living in Korea, I really understood how trashy Hongdae is. And now I don't even, like, bro, you will never find me in Hongdae. Me too. And if I'm in Hongdae, there has to be, like, a really... I would go. I would there. suggest people to go there in the daytime for sure. Daytime is not bad. They have actually. amazing eateries. They have great places to shop, thrifting. So I think in daytime is fine. Especially if you're a student. Oh yeah. Yeah, you oh, should yeah. be in Hongdae if you're a student. Yeah. Now because, and it's very affordable too. Yes. Now when the sun goes down. Mm, that's when all the demons yeah. start to come so up from the ground. And I was like, should I say demons know? or is that real? <laughs> <laughs> like the demons start to come up from the ground. You know, trying to look for girls. You know. Yeah. Yeah. The demons start in Hongdae when the mm. sun goes down. Yeah, and, and of course there are like, girls that just go there strictly. Yeah, let's, so let's not just say guys it's actually. Just both. Yeah, it's, it's a both. balance of women mm. and men just doing very yeah, interesting exactly. things in in Hongdae mm-hmm. for sure. So that's one complaint that you've heard. Is there anything else that has like perked up your ears? I think some people that come to Korea with this expectation of K drama, mm. and then they come here and they're like, "What? I thought." <laughs> Every guy in Korea looks like Korean celebrities. Oh, I guess this is. Bro, they don't. Oh, what? What's going on? Am I am I in Japan or am I in China? <laughs> uh, you know. So I yeah. think that, and then they go like, the food as well. There's a lot of people that can't take Korean food. Oh, it's God. a little. It, it's you know kimchi. It's not. You know, it's I not like kimchi. I don't know about y'all, but but you know, it's kimchi. It has a very potent this smell. There's a stench. There's yeah, a stench, right? Yeah, yeah. I smoking. remember I used to. Um, this is gonna sound. It's gonna sound really fucked up, guys. Uh-huh. I used to live. I used to have college roommates um, when I was interning in DC, and I used to have kimchi in the house, right? So these Oof. were two white girls. Oh no! Right. <laughs> so and they were like, like, I don't want to say bump nowhere girls but like <laughs> i right. do want to say bump nowhere girls mm. these girls ta- tortured me by the way that's why i don't like these girls mm. but i used to have kimchi in the house and i remember every time i would take it out of the fridge it would just fill up the whole house and they'll be like what the hell is that paris they're like what is she eating and we we didn't talk like our relationship was very oh my goodness like, it was bad that would have been terrible having roommates it where you just bad. don't speak to each other it was <laughs> they did something that made me go yeah i'm done with y'all mm. um but i remember to torture them I'll just keep taking the kimchi out of the fridge. That's, that's a pretty just good Just keep plan. opening it. Because I eat kimchi without even mixing it with anything usually. Sometimes. I what is the most the Korean thing you would make for breakfast? For breakfast? Yeah. Like, let's say you're cooking at home. What is the most Korean ass dish? Breakfast. It could be breakfast, lunch. Like, what, was the, what is the most Korean? Well, I guess, like, I can't really, cr- like, cook Korean food. Mm. So, kim- I know how to make kimchi, like, a banging kimchi chicken, actually. Awesome. But one thing that I can eat that most foreigners can't is sundae. Sundegook is my favorite. You know what's so funny? Like last night, I was like, God, I want to have sundegook. Need to have sundegook today. 
And oh I know like really, like a really, really good Sundeguk Matip in Sadang. So good. Wow. Every time I go there, everybody's like, good, how yeah. can she eat that? And I'm yeah. just over there like... <laughs> Sundeguk is not something that a lot of foreigners they can can't eat. eat. Nah. Like they hear how it's made and they're like, oh, I can't eat but that. But it's delicious. Oh it's God. so good. Like, ah, oh, oh, man. Like, it like punches out. you in the heart type yeah. food. Yeah. But most people are like, ugh, it looks nasty. I can't eat it. It is. It's like intestine. Like, yeah. You know? you know what my theory is? Nasty, nasty looking. Taste. Taste amazing. Mm. Like if my food looks pretty, it's not gonna hit. Who knew fried chicken? If you look at fried chicken without it's knowing fried cute. chicken, it's like what the hell is that? It's not cute. Right? Exactly. <laughs> That's actually fried a good chicken point. is very sus looking. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's actually a very good point. Yeah, if you look at what's considered delicious food, it's yeah. not pretty. It's not. It's not. And mostly ethnic foods are not pretty. You know what? That's a real. I didn't never thought about. Think about that. it. That's Western food is usually very nice, like plated and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And then when you start getting ethnic foods, mm -hmm. they're usually really ugly, you but they're so right. good. You're right. That's actually a really solid point. But yeah, that's how I used to torture my roommates. That's actually using. You got to use it to advantage, right? You gotta. You, I st I'm yeah. still hitting my mic, and I've been on this podcast for so long. <laughs> Jesus. Um, but yeah, you gotta listen. If you're okay with eating kimchi and you don't like your roommates, torture them with kimchi. That's actually a really good idea. It's a very legal thing to do. Yeah. You can't say it's illegal at all because it's food. Mm -hmm. That's true. Just keep it in the fridge. Yeah. Just open it and put or, it under their door. <laughs> or yeah. you can make chongkukjang. That's a plan. That's that worse one than kimchi. smells like feet. <laughs> that <laughs> so does. That smells worse than feet. Tastes delicious. But mm. smells like Do you like chongkuk Oh my god, yes. Wow. Th this is what I mean. Beautiful. Ugly sh taste good. Chongkuk <laughs> Some Koreans can't even eat chongkuk Yeah, yeah, they say like the stench is too much for them. I love chongkuk Nah, I'd be yeah. bowl up. Oh, okay. that's good. I'm like not, what is it? Kadaro. Kadaro, yeah, yeah. What is, what is that in English? Picky. Picky, picky there we go. See what I meant? Mm -hmm. I'm not picky with my foods. Mm -hmm. I think that's why I'm able to live in Korea very comfortably. But that's the best, you know? Oh my like, God, how yes. are you going to live in another country and be oh picky? My God, yeah. If you're a picky eater and you're in Korea, I wonder how they survive in Korea. McDonald's? <laughs> oh my god. Oh my. I mean, they're fries. McDonald's? Yes. Uh, maybe a little bit of uh, Burger King on the side, some Jesus. Taco Bell. Some chicken and nuggets then, here uh -huh. and there. Like, you're missing out on so much if you come to Korea. And you you're know what's so eater. funny? Like, I knew this girl, like, she was my upperclassman. Yeah. She went to Italy, and you know what she ate? Tteokbokki. Isn't what that insane? <laughs> how do you go to. <laughs> Isn't that insane? <laughs> she went to Italy and ate tteokbokki. She could have. She missed out on the pasta, the pizza, you know. <laughs> she was like, "I don't want that. Give me the tteokbokki." Yeah. You know what's actually more insane? What? I have Korean, pe like Korean Korean people that I know mm. who will not leave Korea to go to another country without shin ramyeon in their bag. They always carry shin ramyeon in their suitcase. That's crazy. And I'm. Would you do that? I don't eat a lot of ramyeon that oh, much. Okay. Why? I mean, it's not good for you, 100%. Yeah, and I'm now, right now, I'm trying to like cut weight. Oh, too. that makes sense. That yeah. makes sense. They're always like, oh, I need something spicy when they go to Western countries. I could go, well, you know, I. Not I guess, cook. <laughs> you know, <laughs> sorry, my Korean coming up. Um, yeah. I can understand that. I can understand that. Because. I completely so, do, too, by the way. Western food can be a little dukie. It's very oily. Dukie, meaning it's oily, yeah, it's, it's a little creamy. It's and greasy. Sometimes you just need that Korean MSG to like wash it down, you know? <laughs> that best yeah, in some, your body. I guess sometimes you do need it. That, that one yeah. I actually I, would, I wouldn't do that though. I wouldn't, but. I feel like if I was Korean, I honestly would. Especially if I'm going to like countries where it's like pasta and pizza all day. Mm. And then you come from a background of like spicy foods. Mm. Oh, you know what? I, um, I, I made a video about this recently. Mm -hmm. But there's ramen in a tea bag. Have you seen it? In a tea bag? Yeah. Like ramen soup? In yeah, it? soup in a tea bag. So you put it in and you Is put hot it? water. Oh, that's and I so drink innovative. It. it tastes really good. And you just drink it? Yeah, You're and it's healthy it? too. <gasps> Is it? Yeah, it's low sodium, no MSG. Oh, you need to tell me about that. I, was, I can send I need it to, to you. coupon that real quick. You can coupon that, yeah. Something about like the shin ramyeon. Mm. I feel like one thing I love about shin ramyeon mm -hmm. is their soup. But ah, sometimes yeah. their noodles are very, they're you very can, greasy. It is. Yeah. It is. It so is. I usually cook the ramyeon separately and take the But you know, the shin ramyeon has konmyeon, right? Non-fried noodle. But it's not the same. Ah, oh, really? I like it's that. You like that one? Yeah, I like it. It's not I don't the mind same. It. I've had it multiple times because I was like, oh, it's not going to be as oily. But there's something missing in it. But you can cook it separately, like how you That's do it. You can do. do it. Yeah, I just cook it separately, A lot of people pour do that, the actually. oil out, and then mix it. And another thing that mm. they carry is the heppang. Heppang. Ah, that's, yeah. It, it's, so, it's so convenient. But I'm like, there's something very um, unhealthy looking about it, by the way. Is heppang healthy? It's not the healthiest option. I'm yeah. like... Because it's, it's, they have a lot of like 
preservatives on it. And but it's it's I don't know. it's I'm best to cook rice in a, a rice pot. cooker. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. A, a rice cooker. A rice cooker. Paris. A rice cooker. I use a pot. I don't have a rice cooker. You can use a pot. It doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, I use a pot. Like uh. that culture has yet to come to me yet. Uh-huh. There's something nice about just cooking my rice in a pot. Yeah. What's like advice that you would give to foreigners mm. trying to come to Korea? Do you I think you just got to be open to the culture or what do you mean by just open? Just open with the food, the culture and be you I think you just have to be okay with disappointment. Damn. You know what I mean? Like, I think just whatever you do in life, I think it's very important to just be okay with disappointment. Yes. You need to have a love and hate, best friend relationship with disappointment. And I think you just have to learn how to shrug it off and be like, it's all right. It's okay. Yeah. Have you, have you been to Canada? No, never. You've never been to Canada? No, I just had citizenship. I'm technically a Canadian that never went to Canada before. That is so interesting. I know. Do you have any plans or hopes to go or... Uh, to visit, sure. Yeah. Yeah, I'd love to visit Canada. yeah. I, I still haven't really travel that much because you just came out of the army though right is that why no i came out of the army a couple years ago but well, well, just you? busy i'm just i went to japan recently and that's not traveling sean no you can hop to japan from here i can swim there you can literally yeah. literally yeah. swim uh, there like in 30 minutes maybe yeah, yeah. not even 30 like five minutes but you know what's so funny i went to osaka and every street i yeah. would walk i hear korean really? i would walk and say, oh, chin, cha, ba, ba, ba. <laughs> so, pass, pass. so you left korea for korea I was literally at a different city in Korea. Like, that's how I felt. And I would keep walking and this other person is like, oh, and suddenly, oh, what the heck? So every time, it's just like I would just pass by Korea and I'm like, am I in Korea or am I in Japan? I do have to say, a lot of Koreans are in Japan though. Oh, yeah. Because it's literally a swim oh, away. Yeah. yeah. So you got to go to places that it's like less, like more if you, Japanese like, countryside. Yeah, countryside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you really want the Japanese experience, I would suggest countryside. More Interesting. Than, okay. I, I think the best is Tokyo, to be honest. My brother's actually in Tokyo right now. I was supposed to be in Tokyo too, yeah. but... I think Tokyo is where it's at, to be honest. Fa- that's also like where everything is, yeah, I've exactly. heard. Um, it's, like so, Seoul. it's like Seoul, right? Yeah, where everybody's clustered in there too. Mm. Um, do you have anywhere that you want to go? That you've been like, oh, I want to visit? I do want to visit... America, really? Yeah, New York. Huh. I want to go to New York. Oh, New York is because nice. like my I have family friends there and mm, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. But um, wait, let me ask you this: mm-hmm. What do you imagine New York to be like? I heard a lot of stories how dirty it is. And so it. all my I was hoping you didn't yeah, hear all stories. my expectation is down. It's just that just to meet my family friends. Yeah. And, um, and just you know look at Times Square at least once in my life. You it's know, it's actually nice for yeah, the first time. Yeah, especially. for the first time, just yeah. like see it. Yeah. I'm, and eat the food, you know. The food, it's very diverse in New York. Yeah, I just want to try all the New York style pizza. And like, I yeah. never tried it before, you know. Oh, so, okay. But yeah, New York, uh, I want to go to Europe. You know? What part of Europe? Have you uh, thought about that? Or just like a tour around Europe? Literally a tour. Just a tour around Europe. Yeah, okay. always like, um, Italy always had my attention. Oh, Italy really? always did. Yeah, because I love the food. I love Italian food. Like you like pasta and pizza oh, yeah, and all yeah. that? So, uh, you know what I mean? So, it, Italy always was like in my heart. Um, pa- people say Paris is so overrated. Not you. Bro. Not you. <laughs> not not, not this all, Paris. Don't try to play me. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to play Paris. me right now. <laughs> but the city Paris. It's very over. Mm. And as somebody who's named Paris and has been to Paris, mm-hmm. I was like, this is my namesake. This this is it. It was. It's very. That's what everyone says. It's very mad. Yeah. I'm sorry if you live in Paris, but I've been there. And no, I was people like, that live in Paris tell me the same thing. That's true. They go like, "Oh, it's not what you think it is." Yeah. Like the people and the the food culture there is mm-hmm. good, but when it comes to like the streets, this like romantic vibe we get from movie, it's not there, and it's not clean. I'm sorry. Yeah, and I heard a lot of people try to pickpocket you. Uh, yes. I had to like always have my bag fanny like pack, near right? me. Yeah, yeah, like a fanny bag near me. And, but I heard they do yeah. dress very well though. That's true. I do have to, especially as like uh, American, hmm. when you go to America, the, the fashion sense is not really there. I heard it's like people don't really care about that. Care. People are too busy to care about fashion. Yeah, and I feel when like. they come to, from America, they come to Korea, they're like, why is everyone so skinny? Why That's does everybody what? dress so well? Hmm. Yeah, my brother recently came oh, and really? yeah, he, they, that was like a thing. Everybody's like, why are they so well dressed? And you're just like, no, this is just how Koreans dress usually. Hmm. But in America, people just. They, they just don't care too much because it's just too busy. You don't care about fashion. In a sense, like, that's, I think, it's, it's a good thing too, in a sense. But that's then true. in a sense, Korea, it's like, it's a double-edged sword. You know? 100% a double-edged sword. Yeah. Oh, and speaking about people that complain. Yeah. 
I have another thing. What? A lot of people complain about the beauty standards in Korea. Because they're really high, I do have to say. It is. But then, you know, I feel like it is high mm-hmm. and it is a double-edged sword. It is. Because that's why everyone dresses so well. Yeah. Because our beauty standard is so high. So high. So we care about what other people think. We get insecure. And that's true. It's not a good thing. But then I don't know why uh, they're complaining about it. Because you know it's there when you're coming. So yeah, but when I'm when I'm in um, Paris, mm-hmm. I'm not gonna complain about the beauty standards if I don't fit them. I'm just gonna live it. <laughs> you can't do anything if you don't fit in them. Yeah, it's well, unless you get yeah, surgery. Like, so I, I don't guess, know I don't why. Know. And it's because of the beauty standards. K-pop is so popular. Facts. And you're gonna complain <laughs> about it? <laughs> I mean, K-pop is literally the beauty standard. Of yeah, Korea. exactly. And Singing and dancing it, in front of you guys. Our toxic beauty standard. What is what got us today? And then you're gonna complain yes. about it? That is so... T- I've never thought about that. Yeah. So it's like, I don't understand why people complain. Like, if I go to America and I don't fit the beauty standards, I'm going to complain about it. You can't do anything about it, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, I'll just be like, yeah, I know I'm Asian, so shit, what am I going to do? <laughs> and I know I'm black. I'm just like, yeah. I can't you know, fit in. Right? Yeah. When so, you can't fit in, just leave it alone. Exactly. Just do do so, you, you know? Or you can leave Korea. As simple as that. Damn, Sean! <laughs> why is that too much? Say, get the f*** out. Is that too much? <laughs> it's not. It's yeah. not. I completely understand that sentiment. Because mm. if somebody came to Kenya and they were like, oh, I don't fit... The beauty standards in Kenya, I'll just be like, you're better off leaving, to be honest. Exactly. Like, you're that, just, that's what I want to say. Just for your health and, you know, stress and whatnot, mm. just leave. And I'm, I always say this, but it's like, if your country, when your country is perfect, then you can criticize us. Yeah. I'm not sitting here c- criticizing any other country. Because I know Korea's not, con- uh, Korea's not perfect. And I don't know any country that's perfect. Do you have any last words that you would like to tell your audience? Oh, uh, I just want to see how professional Paris was. Was I? Yeah, except for hitting the mic. Oh, I hit the mic all the time. I bet they're like, this is <laughs> again. <laughs> I'm always like, <laughs> Yeah, but uh, I just yeah. want to say thank you so much for having me. This was very fun. Thank you so much yeah, for coming. Yeah, this is super professional. I love your setup. Girl, I try. Yeah. I try. I hope these mics work. Everybody's complaining about the mics. Guys, really? I'm trying. Yeah. The sound has been very... I'm, I'm not a very good uh-huh. sound engineer, so I'm trying really hard mm. to work on the sound, but that's like the biggest complaint that I get is like the sound. But well, I'm trying. I, you know, I think I had, I had a great time. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, please follow me in my socials. What's your it's, social? It's Sean Solo. It's Sean Solo. It's Sean Solo on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. Please um, check me out. And Paris again, thank you so much for having me. Thank you. For it was a, it was a pleasure, absolute I was pleasure. Like, oh my God, he's coming! I was like, thank you, Sean. Absolute <laughs> for coming. This is great. Oh, thank awesome. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. But anyways, guys, that was it for today's episode of Korea Unfiltered with Sean. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for coming. Of course. If my you're pleasure. an audio listener, make sure you give us five stars. And if you're a YouTube watcher, make sure you subscribe. As I always say, there are eighty percent of y'all watching and not subscribing. What? Stalkers. Are you kidding me right now? Complete stalkers. Unbelievable. Completely unbelievable. Y'all heard Sean? Completely that unbelievable. Please subscribe. Subscribe, right like, and share with your friends, guys. Or you can just subscribe to me and not Paris. If you do that, I swear <laughs> to God, <laughs> I'm blocking Sean. <laughs> I don't know from where, but I'm blocking Sean. <laughs> but anyways, guys, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next episode. Bye-bye. Bye. Sean, you're supposed to wave now. I was, I was wave, wave no, now? you need to wave now. Okay, Come on, Sean. We One, do it together. Two. We do it together. Bye, One, guys. Two.